Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to work in my large Ranger Dilutions art journal. And what I want to find are a couple of pages, four pages, that are blank. So I've got some in the middle here to start. So this is where I'm going to do my, uh, my flip idea that I have. There's lots of videos on cutouts and things, and I've shown them in my videos too, but I just had a fun idea of something I wanted to try, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So to start off this page idea that I have, I'm taking four pages in my Ranger Dilutions, large Ranger Dilutions art journal. So there's four pages I'm going to use, <clears throat> and on the first set of pages uh, to the right, I'm putting a self-healing mat behind and I'm drawing a heart so I've hand drawn a heart right here and then a second line here on this side and if you don't feel like you could hand sketch it you could always fold a piece of paper in half and do it that way and use that as a template but I can just hand do it so I did that. Next I'm going to take a ruler and because in this gutter you're gonna, I'm going to need to go about a quarter of an inch off to the right here so that this piece has something to anchor to. I'm going to draw a line from the inside to the inside. So I'm going to leave a little space there. Let me lift it up and show you. So see how it's going to be still connected where the string sews it on and that way it'll stay in place and not wobble around. So next I'm going to take my scissors or an X-Acto knife, whichever you want to do, and I'm going to cut that heart out. So I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And since this has got a lot of steps in this video, I didn't show my cutting it out because um, that would just take up more filming time and I have other fun things to show. So these pieces that I've cut out, I'm going to save. This is nice thick paper and it's cream colored, so this would be awesome for arms and legs and heads for uh, paper dolls. So I'm going to put that aside and use it on another project. So here it is cut out, my little heart flip. And you do have to cut a piece at the top and then that piece in the center to make the flip, to make it work. Okay, and the next thing that I'm going to do, this is going to be really fun, I think. I had this idea in my head and I just wanted to share it. I'm going to put my protective mat behind and I'm going to start collaging all over this, this side. the fun part. I'm going to take pieces of all kinds of pattern paper, things I've gotten out of magazines, some book text, some sheet music, anything I can find. And on this side, I'm going to do like a collage type thing. And I'm using Mod Podge. Um, I'm saving my good um, matte gel medium for when I apply images and focal points. So I might as well just use Mod Podge for this. So Mod Podge, can't speak. So I'm going to just lay these things over and just start collaging right over this heart and I'm not going to be too thoughtful about it I'm just going to start piecing and putting piece and put until this whole thing is covered just on this side the other side I'm going to do texture instead to have the other side be different so this side's going to be collaged and the other side's going to be texture so I'll go ahead and do that and cover this and then come back and show you the next step. In one of my older tips and tricks videos, I showed that I go to the dollar store and got um, these dollar containers that were um, kitchen dish soap and I emptied them, rinsed them, and I filled them. So one is Mod Podge, one is Varnish, I've got uh, Matte Medium in one, uh, Clear Gesso, White Gesso, Black Gesso, and they're perfect size and it's easy for just applying a drop of Mod Podge and then doing your collage. So if, if uh, you haven't seen that older tips and tricks video, I just thought I would show that, that this is a really fun tip and they're easy to refill too and don't forget to use fun things like the inside of security envelopes because their patterns inside security envelopes are so fun and interesting 
and they're nice pieces of paper to use for collage so when you get that junk mail save those security envelopes I love the patterns and the interesting shapes and they take color really well when you add some color to them so don't overlook that free gift in the mail of bills that have cool patterns inside them use little pieces of decorative napkin some postage stamps little images you could um, rubber stamp little images on paper anything you want to add to this but it is going to show so you want it to be collage in a way that it looks really cool and it's stuff that you want to see and then you want to let it dry when I go through magazines I punch out with different size circle punches I punch out little images of things that are just interesting shapes colors if they have an image like this is a butterfly or a flower and I go off center I just punch them out and I have a huge container full of stuff that I've punched out and it's using up every little bit of those magazine pieces so you don't waste anything and this would be a great place to add some of those fun and interesting little circles too so add some circle images and you can go off the edge so that it's going to be half on and half off I always love that too you just want a lot of fun interest and that's a little plain so let's throw a circle up there Okay, now let's let this dry. Now that this is dry, I'm going to flip it over to the other side. I'm going to carefully remove it here from, it's stuck down to my little plastic protector, so you have to be real careful so you don't tear it. Now that this is dry, I'm going to take my cutting mat and put it on this side. And I'm going to flip this over and use my scissors and trim out the rough edges that overhang so where the papers were hanging over the edge those are going to get trimmed off you can use scissors or you can use an exacto with your cutting mat so then you flip it back over and look what you've got look at that beautiful collaged heart I love it so that's the first step. Now the next step is going to be to take a piece of discarded plastic. This is plastic from packaging whenever I buy anything for, you know, anything that you buy, houseware stuff or art stuff, anything. Um, I save these plastic pieces and throw them in a bin because I use them in my art and upcycle them. So I'm going to take this piece of plastic and I'm going to use this inside the heart to make a window so I'm cutting all the raised edges off so I have end up with a flat piece of plastic you could also use sheets of acetate if you rather purchase plastic than use upcycled but I like to repurpose things instead of just throwing them in the waste bin okay so this has got a hole cut out of it for where it was hanging whatever the product was and I don't want that to impede this so I'm gonna flip it over so that it's down here and put this behind tucking it all the way into that gutter as far as I can get it and I'm gonna take a pen a sharpie pen would work best and just make a line for where this outside is so that I'll know what I need to trim I don't want to draw a line inside just on the outside and when I trim this I'm gonna trim smaller than what I just marked because you can it can be anywhere inside of here so I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch in and do my trimming to trim this plastic Okay, 
and put it back in. Make sure that it fits and that you don't see it and that it covers the inside of the heart. Okay, so now I'm gonna put some glue around the edges and I want a line right on this seam that's gonna tuck underneath here. So I'm gonna go as close as I can to that line with some glue. And then around the edges. And now I'm going to tuck that down in that crease as far in as I can get it. And press this into place. Making sure everything's covered and then making sure that that is that piece or that edge is way down in that gutter. And then I'm going to put my rice bag in place and let this dry. So here's my window. It's all glued into place. Isn't that cute? My plastic window that's decorative and it flips nicely. So what I'm going to do next is on this seam, the Ranger's Dilutions are uh, sewn in and on that seam I'm going to put some tape, a line of tape that goes onto the plastic and covers up the, um, the stitching and this little piece that I cut to make the, the heart window. So I'm going to put some tape down this, down this gutter. And I decided to go with washi tape. I wasn't sure because sometimes washi tape doesn't stick well, but I think masking tape is going to be too hard to um, camouflage. So I'm going just a little bit over that edge and onto the plastic. And then covering up that gutter piece. And I think what I'll do is a second layer. That will really make it stay well. Because you know how washi tape can be really fickle. Sometimes it sticks great and sometimes not so much. But I'll double it up. That will make it nice and strong. And that doesn't look bad. So I'm going with washi. And I think at the top and the bottom where that line is, I don't like that line of washi. I'm just going to glue in a little piece of collage looking paper up onto the heart again and onto that so that it'll it'll uh, not look so like I stuck washi tape there if that makes any sense yeah I like that better then it looks a little bit artsy and not so um, just straight washi the tape. The next thing is going to be to flip this over and put my same washi tape on this side as well. So I've put my double washi on this side as well and now it's nice and stuck and it really makes for a good anchor base for my window, my flip window. And if you get a place like this, see this is what I'm talking about. Washi tape can be a fickle fellow and it doesn't always stick great, so just put your glue in there, art glitter glue or whatever tacky glue you have. Put a little bit of glue and stick that washi down really well because it, let's face it, it doesn't always stick that great. And you want it to stay put, so you might have to put a little glue under your washi wherever it decides to come up. One thing that's helpful is to take a bone folder and to really burnish down that washi. If you get in there and really burnish it, it'll help it stick better. So burnish it well on both sides. Next I want to cover this side. And I'm not going to do the same collage that I did over here. I'm going to do texture over here. And 
I wanted to glue in that plastic first so now whatever you cover this side of the heart with you're going to cover that edge of plastic. So I'm going to put my little protective mat on to protect my sheet, my page. I love using things for texture so I'm going to use things like this is a tea dyed cheesecloth. There's some woven string like material that's soft. These are those sheets that you get at the dollar store they're for um, you know wiping down your counter instead of using paper towel they're reusable but they're nice waffly print on them and they're fun to tear apart um, this is a dryer sheet out of the dry, out of the clothes dryer that works great some tissue paper so all those things are going to make texture and i have to be careful not to go in this space because it is going to show through the window so if you put glue you're going to see glue and things you don't want to slop your um, adhesive your Mod Podge or your matte gel medium over that area you can cover it if you want to you could make a template a cardboard template which might be a really good idea so after I said that and thought that through I think that's exactly what I'm going to do is make a template out of an old file folder to use as a protector. So if you put this over and you look through the light, you'll be able to see and draw, go this way. The light is behind. I can see, see how the light is behind? I can see where to draw my line. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just gonna be a protection thing, but I'm gonna sketch out a line this will be super, super helpful. Like that. See how when I lift it up, the lamp is back here so I can see through and I was able to make that shape. Okay, so now I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to use that to keep me from slopping onto my plastic sheet. Okay, so this will just fit in here and this will cover up that space while I'm working. I need some glue under my washi tape. I didn't glue this side down. You know washi tape. It can be a bugger. But after you glue it, it's usually fine. Okay. So I should let that dry a minute. But anyway, this is going to cover this hole. And give me a place to work. And so what I'm going to do is start using... my. I'm going to use Mod Podge, I think. So I'm going to start tearing little bits of things and crumpling them up. This is just tissue paper and start applying them mm -hmm. on this side to make it covered and to make it textured. And then I'm going to paint over it afterwards and it'll be really cool with lots and lots of texture. So you just kind of scrunch it up as you go along, scrunch and dab. Dab with your brush. Instead of a painting motion, you're kind of dabbing it on there. Make sure you get Mod Podge underneath and on top, and then just start laying stuff on. When it dries, it's going to be just glorious, glorious texture. So on little things like using this material with strings, I'm going to cut a piece. And the same thing, apply some nice thick Mod Podge right here. Lay this down. And then Mod Podge over it. And kind of work it down in there and then let it dry. And be sure you cover up that plastic so you don't mess up your window don't mess up that beautiful window you created okay and that's going to need a little bit more mod podge on it so i'll just pour a little more on top and that's what i'm going to do all the way around i'm going to just add things and work them in layer them with all those different things that I said I was going to use and then let it really, really dry well. Mm -hmm. 
And one tip I have is put the stuff down and let it really, really dry where it's kind of um, having something to anchor to. And then once it dries, put another coat of Mod Podge over it to just kind of really get it to settle in. Because some of it is loose and you don't want to keep brushing and working it, especially over plastic, because it'll just keep moving around. So just kind of lay it in, pat it in where it's attached, let it all dry, and then come back and do a little bit more Mod Podge over the top. And then the true patience comes in having to wait for this to dry. That's always the hardest part is the patience in waiting for it to dry. So give it a try and see what you think. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Um, the process, like I said, is a little tricky, but well worth it. And when this is done, it's going to be stunning. And you do have to let this air dry. You can't use a heat tool because you will melt and warp your plastic piece. So you have to be patient and it is going to take a couple of hours for this to really, really dry solid. Patience, patience, patience. This is dry. So now what I'm going to do is I was going to take my scissors and trim it, but when I flip it over, I really like that rough edge that it creates with the texture. So I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to trim that. Now down here, this is too long. So I think what I'll do here is just trim it and do it a little choppy and sketchy. There. So it's still hanging over and this is a little long so let's just trim a little bit of that but I think I like that texture the rough edge instead of creating a smooth edge so it's real pretty I love it now what I'm going to do is put my mat back underneath and very carefully I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to paint white gesso over this side and I can put my cardboard piece back in to protect it. Um, if you feel like you're going to slop over into the plastic, definitely use that. But I'm going to just be really careful. So I'm going to put on some white gesso. See, again, I've got it in one of those containers. And when I get up to this edge, I'm just going to be real careful and paint up to the edge, but not over it so it doesn't go on the glass. And I'm going to cover this whole thing in white gesso and then let it dry. So here it is all covered with gesso. And I also took gesso and I covered up this left side of the um, washi tape that is onto the other opposite page. And I let it dry and I'm putting a second coat just to really camouflage. I don't like that straight line of the washi tape. And this will blend it into that other page so that looks much better. Now I'm going to let this completely dry. Next I'm going to take the, a pale blue paint and paint this whole thing a pale blue. Just as a base color and just being careful going up to that edge so I don't paint on the plastic. And this is just a base color and then I'll let it dry. This is one of those projects that takes a while because you can't really use your heat gun to dry each layer. Normally I just whip through it and dry them and go on to the next thing, but each thing I have to do it and let it dry, but that's okay. End result's gonna be really fun. While that's drying, I can still add more paint, so I'm gonna take one of these homemade acrylic paint sprays and put my little protector over it, over the plastic, and add some sprays of acrylic paint. So while this side is drying, I have to stay away from it and really let it dry well so that I can continue working on it. I can work on this page. 
I've turned my book back right side up and I'm going to take my template that I made for covering this window and I'm going to use it for penciling my shape on this side and I'm just going to do a light pencil mark so I know where the heart's going to be on this side. And I know what I want to use as a focal in that window. On this side I'm going to use a variety of sizes of circle punches and I'm going to go along this edge and I'm going to punch these circles randomly so if you flip your punches upside down then you can see where you're using them where the hole is going to end up being So I ended up with a Swiss cheese looking design over here, which is exactly what I wanted. Let's see if I can slip this in here to go in a little further. Oh yes, I can. Perfect. And of course I save all my circles because they're good for other projects. So they'll go in my, my circle bin. And now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw a line around these circles like that and I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to paint this side up to that penciled in heart line with a really dark navy blue. See how, what a cool fun border that made? I love it. So this is going to get painted in a dark blue and it's just acrylic paint. And as I get up to this heart, I'm just going to kind of stipple dot my brush and then paint up to that so that it's not a straight edge. I'm going to leave it kind of rough. I like that look. And as I paint this, I'm using my brush strokes kind of light handed and in all different directions to almost make that paint be a little bit of a textury look instead of just smooth paint. So as you can see, I'm just kind of going back and forth in all different directions and you can see the brush strokes, but they're not all going one way. Instead, it looks textured. Next, I'm just going to take an eraser and erase that pencil line that I did. And then I'm going to take a baby wipe and some light blue paint. And I'm going to fill this space in a light blue, like a sky blue. So I'm just using acrylic paint in a cotton blue and a baby wipe and I'm just going to swirl this paint on to fill this heart. And I'm using a baby wipe so that it's not solid. If you wanted it to be a solid color, then you could just paint it with a paintbrush. 
but the baby wipe makes it just kind of softer. And I'm going to spounce in some clouds so it's going to resemble sky. And even while it's drying, it's okay. I'm going to still go in and add my clouds now. And I like to use a smooth gesso and just a sponge wadded up to make clouds. Gesso works great for that because it covers really well. A little bit better than acrylic paint. And I just want a few. I don't have to have tons. good enough see it makes some clouds while all that is drying I'm gonna kind of just again stay away from all this and now I'm gonna work on these little circles so what I'm gonna do with those is take some ephemera I have some ephemera that is from um, some of them are Tim Holtz come in the ephemera pack some of them is just things I've cut out of magazines and little packs of ephemera that I've gotten from places like Tuesday morning. Just all kinds of ephemera pieces. Like this cute one. This nice cardstock one that says live, love, laugh. And it would go perfect behind this circle. So now I'm going to glue ephemera behind each one of these circles. So I just glued my ephemera by flipping the page over, putting a little circle of glue around the edge, sticking the pieces in there, and when I decorate my next page, I'll just cover it with something else so that won't matter. And now I'm going to take my scissors and trim off all the little edges and the pieces of things that stick out. So look at that adorable border. I love it. I've got shiny papers, ephemera, little bits and pieces of this and that. Some little book text things. Live, love, laugh. Isn't that pretty? That makes a beautiful, beautiful border edge on that side. Okay, so now this is dry, and I don't care for the green washi tape on this side. It's fine on this side, but on this side, the green doesn't go. So I'm going to just take that same blue paint that I used for the sky, and I'm going to paint over that washi tape just to uh, blend it in with the sky part. And as you can see, that looks so much better, toning down that green washi tape with the blue paint much much better and you know as you're creating and you're putting something together and it's just trial and error if you don't like something paint over it color over it and gesso over it and make it different so that's what i did here and i'm i like that better because now it's more cohesive so i'm going to let this dry and now i'm going to work on my focal images for this part of the heart so my focal points over here i want flowers down here and i've got this out of a magazine i love that I've got this cute bird. This is in a bird and bloom magazine. And this is from a calendar. So I'm going to trim those out. And those are going to be the focal points that go on this it's side. It's going to be super pretty. And now I'm cutting out my little bird. And I just want to show you a little trick for fussy cutting. So what I did with this edge where the feathers are is I just cut it out just a little further. And then I take my little fine scissors and I go into as far back as I can and I just make little tiny cuts and I move the image back and forth as I cut and when you do that you end up with see if I can show you an edge that looks more like the jagged feather edge see that so it's just a little trick so that it's not like up here on the top of the head it's just too smooth and those are supposed to be feathers so if I go in there and do my little cutting trick with just making little tiny cuts and then crisscross them and go back and forth little pieces of paper will fall out and it'll end up looking more featherish now I'm ready to apply my focal images and for this I use matte gel medium and I like to put 
I'm going to start with the furthest back image. And I like to put matte gel medium down on the page. And then I also like to flip this over, flip the image over and put it on the back of the image. So if you put it on both places, a nice thin coat, you don't want it thick. And this is pretty thin magazine image, so you have that chance of it wrinkling, but if you do it this way, sometimes you get lucky. And I start to put it in place and start working it down with my paintbrush. Working outwards and being careful of all these little edges. And with it on both, if it's on the background and it's on the image, chances are it won't wrinkle. up over that edge okay and I'm ready to do the next image same thing decide where it's gonna go Put it on the page and on the back of my image. And work from center out. And then my last image, the bird. This is super thin too. But that's okay. Sometimes thinner paper tends to wrinkle more, but... super cute. I love it. So now while that focal side dries, I'm going to go back over to this side, slip my protector underneath and work on adding some more dimension to this. And I'm going to go back to using the gelatos and my finger and just putting on some gelato and rubbing it in. And it's going to pick up and show more depth of that texture. Like that. And then what you also can do, I'm going to use some Distress Ink, the chipped sapphire, and same thing, kind of just go over it and when you rub over that design, it picks up all that texture and shows it off. Now I'm going to take a Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 in a yellow ochre color 
and I want to pick up some of the ochre color over here because this is so blue and so I'm going to just use a water brush and pick some up off the crayon and then come in here and add some color and it looks nice it gives it like an antique look see how pretty that is I like how it tones down the brightness of the blue and adds some antique look. And it'll just dry. This is a water soluble media, so it will it will dry. So that's pretty. So I'm going to go around and do a little bit of that all in different areas around that heart. Now I'm taking some um, gelato in Mars color and it is like a frosted really bright pink and I'm adding just a touch of that and that's just to bring an accent into it that there's pink over here so I'm bringing some in over here. I like to do that and make it look like it really goes together. And when you rub that gelatos over that texture, look how that picks up the texture. Also, it's really pretty. It's really prettier in person than it is on film. And I'm going to add a little bit of that pink to these flowers. Just to pop them a little bit, brighten them up. Just a little. Okay, so it's coming along. I like it. Now I'm taking an Ecoline brush pen and I'm going around the edge. I wanted a darker blue edge. So I'm adding some Ecoline. It's a an ink based, a dye based ink pen. And you know what? You don't have to have all these supplies that I have. Um, you, you know, you don't have to say, oh, I can't do that because I don't have all these things that she's using. Use what you've got. Look around at your art supplies and get to know them. Get to know how they work and don't be afraid to play around with them and see what you've got and what will work. Don't be afraid to experiment. And you might come up with something that you think, oh my gosh, this is a mistake and it may turn out to be the coolest thing you ever made. So don't ever be afraid to experiment with your supplies no more you do the better it looks and I love how this turned out I'm gonna leave it I think it looks really good but what I'm doing as one last thing is I'm gonna take some Arteza in bronze this is metallic paint so see how it's really shiny and I'm gonna put a little bit on my palette and just pick it up with my finger I love using my finger in my art. So just get a little bit on my finger and I'm going to brush across some of these texture spots with bronze. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Look how pretty. And the bronze is going to go with that flower and it's going to pick up that texture from all the different fun things that I put down on this. Love it. That's exactly what it needed. And just the paint on my finger and rubbing across it is perfect. A brush would go down in between and my finger stays on top of the ridges so it's just adding paint to the texture. Let me hold it up and show you. I love it. See if you can see. Hard to see in the light. Can't see it. Look at the bronze. Hopefully you can see that. Isn't that pretty? Like I said, prettier in person, but look at the bronze and how that bronze color ties in with the bronze in this flower. Pretty. Okay, next step, moving on. And look how pretty when I close my little window Look at that, it's gorgeous. Look how that shines, comes through with that collaged image 
And then the birds and the flowers and the background and the clouds. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. I love this. It's turning out just awesome. Okay, so I'm going to carefully lay this over on this side so that I can come back now and work on this side. And the first thing I'm going to do over here is to use my little cutout again. My little cutout. Line it up where I want it. Make a pencil mark again. So that cutout is really helpful for a couple of different reasons in this project. And I'm just doing a light pencil line so now I know where that heart image is for the window. I'm going to use greens, various greens, on this side of the heart. I'm going to paint it green. Same thing, using a baby wipe and just um, blending out the paints. And part of the reason I'm going greens is because of this green washi tape that I use. I'm going to go for a look that's kind of like that washi. And my words, my lettering is going to go inside this heart. Um, I was going to put the lettering around the outside edge and put an image but I've decided I want the words in there so I'm going to just spread out some different greens and blend them and make kind of a interesting look and it can be light because I'm going to use paint pen to do my lettering and I'm going right up onto my washi, don't care go blend it in and I'm not blending those paint colors directly into each other I'm just going up to each other because I want it to look marbled I love this technique. It's really pretty when it dries and it looks really pretty and marbled. Where my paint is too thick I'm kind of picking it up because I don't want it to be really thick paint because then my paint pen won't work for writing making lettering so I'm just kind of going back over and now I'm kind of removing some of the thicker areas You just kind of play until you get it the way you want it to look but look at that beautiful marbled heart I love it so now I'm gonna let this that side down. I'm gonna use punched out circles instead of punching the holes and putting the circles the images behind the circles like I did on this side and cutting the border I'm not going to do that on this side I'm going to just glue the circles that I've punched out and cut out onto the page. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that same dark blue around the edge and then um, glue my little circles into place. So I'm taking my brush to make that white cast shadow that looks like it's coming out from behind the heart. I'm just dry brushing into it like this to create that cool looking pattern behind the heart. So it's the white background page, but then the blue is being kind of like dragged into it. And it's creating that effect that makes it look like the heart is, has got a light source behind it. So I've added my circles where I want them and now it's time to do the lettering on the heart. I have some other videos on how I do creative lettering 
And this template here, since it's not going to be used any longer, would be perfect for laying out my words. And the first thing I do is to write out the saying, and then I'll put a link in the description box below for the video on how I do this, because it's really kind of fun, and this would be the perfect page to do it on. So what you do is write out your saying, find the keywords, make those words in a different font, maybe make the keywords bigger or a different color, and lay it all out. So I'm going to lay it all out here so that I know how I want it to look on here, and then I can pencil it into place once I get this looking the way that I want it to. And I'll show you after I come back and pencil this out. So this is what I've come up with. This is the saying that I'm using. Don't let the mood or life of anyone else ruin your day. Open your heart and happiness will find its way in. That's my saying for this page and it's going to go right there. So I've drawn this out and see what I've done. Here I've done connective letters that are in cursive. I've done, I've highlighted the word mood and life. The word open, the word heart is in a heart. Happiness is big. So that's how I kind of do my creative lettering. And like I said, that video, I show how to do it and I'll put a link. But that's how it's going to go and it's going to go right there. And then this will flip and it'll show the words through. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, pencil it onto the uh, green heart using this as my guide of what I want to do. And then I'm going to do it in Posca pen. So here's my lettering completed. Don't let the mood or life of anyone else ruin your day. Open your heart. Happiness will find its way in. And now what I'm doing is taking a black Posca pen and a fine point and I'm going around these circles in a really loose circle. Just like this. I mean really loose and free-handed. Sketchy. And the black is not going to show up very well because this is a dark background, but it'll show up enough that it'll just make a nice little interest around these circles. Let's see if you can see that. So now the only thing I think I need to do to add to this is, let me zoom out a little bit, things like this. See how this is very lime green and there's no green over here? I like things to be balanced when I do artwork. So if this has got a, is going to have some light greens, this little border here needs a little bit of light greens. So I'm just going to take some Posca, because this is nice and bright, and come in here and add some lime green. And I just color it in. Use the warmth of my finger to rub it out. And I'm only going to do it in a few little spots, but it just, see how that immediately ties them in together. So you've got light green and light green, and it just makes it look cohesive. So I just am adding some little touches and little pops of color, maybe a little green down here in this spot that has um, security envelope. It'll still show the pattern, but turn it a little green. Neo colors are great for that because they can add just that nice little pop of color. They're nice and bright and they blend well with your finger. So that looks really cute. And then I'm going to come back and do some little silly things like um, zoom in like where this circle is with this face. I think I'm going to add a little dot border around it and just add a couple of little fun elements here and there. I also like to add um, little sparkle things so I might add some uh, sparkling Nouveau drops or some glitter, maybe some glass beads and I'll show you that when I show the final final piece. But this is basically what it's turning out and I've got my cute fun cutout border with images behind the circles. I've got circles on top. I've got my cute window and my flip that flips over so it shows the sing and on this side shows my little bird image. I think I've got an idea for my bird. So I hope you enjoyed this. This was super fun. I had a good time creating this art journal page and um, I hope it gave you some ideas of maybe something new to try on your art journal. 
So thanks for stopping by and go make art because art soothes the heart. <laughs>